all your blessings today. God, we ask you just to move, touch, anoint, minister this morning. And Father, we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning. Somebody shout hallelujah in the house. Hallelujah. Let's cross those aisles. Make yourself friendly. Shake hands, fist bump, elbow bump, whatever you're comfortable with.
place our hands and say, yes, Lord, yes. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, Lord, we're answering your call this morning. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Let's say yes to the blessings of God. Hallelujah. Let's say yes for the mercy of God. Let's say yes to the grace of God that it's offered to us every day, every day through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's go to prayer this morning. We're going to be praying this morning. Let's uh, continue. Remember every day to pray for our country, our leaders, our elected officials, government, our uh, military. Let's pray for our nation. It's a, our nation is in great need of prayer in this time. We need to pray for God to give wisdom to our leaders, for God to revive our nation, for the Holy Spirit to downpour across our nation so we can have an awakening. Let's continue to pray for the missionaries, those who are in foreign lands, taking this gracious and gospel to those who have not heard about the gospel of God. Let's pray for our city, our local economy, our schools here in the Corpus Christi area. Let's continue to pray for our pastor, his wife, Sister Sheila, my God, our pastor's parents. Hallelujah. We have to pray for our pastor. It's not a choice, it's a commandment of, of God. Hallelujah. For God to give strength, wisdom to our pastor so he can continue to lead us hallelujah through this journey you know every day gets harder every day we get harder to pastor right but uh we have a pastor that is committed that has answered a call from god so we owe it to him to pray for him to pray for his family for god to give him bless it but for god to bless him and give him strength Let's pray for Sister Cecilia Pass, Sister Willa, uh, uh, Brother Joe, and Sister Linda Blake Flacker, Sister Bunny Peters, Sister Jenny's daughter Sheila, Benjamin Tober. Let's pray for Joshua Shaw, for Sisters Marty, Maddie, Marty, Sisters um, Money's family, and Sisters Mona family. And let's pray for Sister Ellie Medina's family. And I know all of us here this morning, we have a prayer request, we have uh, areas of need, we have a request in front of God this morning that we have, that we're praying, things that we're in need of. I don't know why you're in need of this morning, maybe healing, maybe a family issue, maybe it's a financial issue, hallelujah. But let's bring it to the Lord this morning. Pray for each another. Pray for your brothers and sisters, for the persons next to you uh, need this morning. Let's pray for one another. You know, this battle is hard enough to hard enough to be fought alone. That's why we have a church. That's why God instituted the church. That's why we don't, we, we cannot uh, serve God from our house. We come to God, to his house, to give offering, to give praise, and for a praise of worship. But we also come for a sense of community so we can pray for one another, so we can uphold one another, so we can help one another across this uh, journey, hallelujah, on, on our way to heaven. So let's pray this morning. Let's raise our hands. I believe in a God that answers. I believe in a God that has ears. When Elijah was there in Mount Carmel, he was talking about the, to the prophets of, of Baal and saying, oh, maybe you're, you're, you're God. Maybe he's sleeping. He didn't hear their cry. But when Elijah cried out to God, fire descended from heaven. Hallelujah. Because our God hears. Our God has ears and he hears. He sees our cry. He sees our tears. He knows our need. Let's go to the throne of grace this morning. Heavenly Father, we come to you, God. This morning, God. Oh, God, we come, God, in, in asking, God, in the name of Jesus, God. We're approaching the throne of grace, God. The great the grace that you've extended to us through Jesus Christ, God. The grace that has allowed us to, us to be here this morning, God. Worshiping your name, mentioning your name, your all-powerful name, God. God, we have requests. We have a list that we pray for God. We're praying for our nation, for the church in America, God. We're praying for revival. We're praying for our pastor, God, for his family, for our local economy, God, for our city, God, our community. Oh, God, bring revival to this city, God. Bring revival to our community, God. Oh, save the souls, God. Oh, reveal yourself, God. I ask for my brothers and sisters, God, that I've read the list here, God. They're in need, God. They're in need of a touch from you, God, this morning. Oh, we ask that your Holy Spirit touch, God, that we have our healings, God, miracles, God, wonders and miracles that we can testify about the glory of God, the God for our pastor and his family, God. I ask you to give him wisdom, strength, God. Oh, God, they need God. Give
give him authority, God, to continue to guide us, God. Oh, through this path, God. I have prayed for my brothers and sisters here, God. For this church, for the glad sided church, God. Oh, God, touch us this morning, God. Oh, send your Holy Spirit, God, that we might not leave here like we came, that we might live with joy. We might live with all oh, authority from the Spirit, God, to continue to serve you, God. Save souls, God. Reach us this morning, God. Oh, awaken us this morning, God. In the name of Jesus, I pray. In the name of Jesus. Can we raise our hands? Hallelujah. Can we praise God this morning? Can we praise this God this morning? Hallelujah. this morning to be in the center of his will. You may be seated this morning. We are so thankful that you're here today to worship with us in spirit and in truth this morning. We're looking for what God is going to do in this service today. And uh, we got a lot out this morning, but you know what? The spirit of the Lord is with us this morning. And we're still going to have church and we're still going to believe that God is going to move and God's going to touch today. Hallelujah. Way of announcements as you're getting ready, as you're listening to uh, the announcements this morning, going to be receiving our tithes and offerings. If you're listening by the way of live stream, <coughs> Sister uh, uh, Lisa has already put up the number. You can call in this morning uh, and uh, use that aspect of, uh, of our live stream to, for your giving today. But if you need to use the ATM machine, she's already back there ready. Uh, this morning, but uh, way of announcements, don't forget tonight, 445 for the board, we'll be having a meeting in the, in the pastor's office at 445 this evening. Uh, next Sunday is Senior Saints and Women's Ministries meeting right after the Sunday morning worship service, so that'll be taking place. Then on the 29th, uh, uh, we'll be having our annual business meeting and this year we're going to do something totally different than what we have done in the past. Uh, the 29th, we're going to have a church social uh, after church. We're going to have a church fellowship. And it's going to be soups and uh, uh, sandwiches and we'll supply some salad. But uh, next Sunday we'll have a list up for the soups. And we need you to bring a crock pot full of soup, homemade soup, all right? Uh, not go down there and buy uh, some Campbell's soup and dump it in there, but uh, uh, let's try to make something. And the reason why we'll put up a list so we don't have all vegetable soup or all tortilla soup or all chili and nothing else. So uh, maybe you have a special. I know some of you uh, make manoodle. Isn't that what it's called, something manoodle. like that? Manoodle. Manoodle. All right. Some of you have make that. Um, uh, don't be offended, but your pastor's not going to eat it. But uh, uh, if you, I know a lot of you like it, so uh, you can have that. And uh, I, th I would have ate it years ago when we first moved here if they would have told me that was Mexican chili or something. But after they told me how it's made, I said, no, nah, I don't believe so. But uh, that's just not for me. But, uh, you know, all the different soups, some of you like potato soup. So bring... And not the little warmer size crock pot. Bring a crock pot full of it so you it can share. And we'll put up a list next Sunday or uh, uh, sign up so you can say, uh, you know, if you're bringing broccoli and cheese, whatever it is you're bringing. And so we won't have 10 of the same thing. We'll have a variety of different soups. And uh, uh, so we appreciate that. And then after service on the 29th, after we eat and we're dismissed from eating, uh, the membership and those who want to stay for our annual business meeting will have it probably around 2 o'clock over here in the sanctuary or something from there. That We don't, won't have service that Sunday night. So that is taking place. Then also we have coming up 
our fellowship meeting, our uh, first winter fellowship meeting, then we'll have one in the spring also and uh, one in the fall. But our uh, uh, fellowship meeting is coming up the second Sunday of uh, February. So it'll be on the 12th. It'll be at Brother Ray Perez's church. And uh, so it'll be there at Grace Temple. Uh, it'll start at 6 o'clock, I believe. We'll let you know more as time's getting closer. Brother Joe Gans, he's a wonderful preacher. Uh, he'll be ministering uh, there in that service for our fellowship meeting. And Lord willing, we'll be, having, we'll be hosting in April here to our church at the end of April. So uh, those are some things that are happening here in the next few weeks. Oh, also, I forgot to announce this. Uh, this coming Saturday from 3 to 5 uh, in our fellowship hall right over here, uh, Teen Recycle will have an, will be having a time of fellowship, refreshments, and f games and fun uh, over here. So uh, all the uh, Teen Recycle, uh, this coming, you say, who is that Teen Recycle? <laughs> if you draw a Social Security check or you draw a uh, benefit check, you're part of that, social, that group, all right? And uh, maybe you're not old enough yet to draw that and you want to come. I promise you they will not kick you out, all right? And so uh, uh, we'd love for you to be a part of that. Sister uh, uh, Jean and uh, Sister Esther w is over that. Uh, if you want to help out with refreshments, uh, let them know. Talk with them today after church uh, on your way out the door. Uh, they may want you, uh, uh, you can see, you can fix a, a pot of soup and try it out <laughs> and see if it's any good and then fix it again for the next week, all right? So that's how that works. We got a recipe, use it on them, you know. They tell me the older you get, food, you know, food don't have that much taste. I don't know. But, uh, uh, but you know, my, I know my mom and dad, they'll eat stuff nowadays that they wouldn't eat 30 years ago. So, uh, and uh, I've even got Sheila. She's getting older, you know. She eats broccoli now. So uh, it does work, you know, even with, the, with these. Uh, I, I figured that out. All right. And I'm digging myself into a hole. So, Brother Natalia, you maybe need to come and get me out of this hole this morning. But, uh, uh, do, you know, uh, tell them if you will help them bring something. Yes. Uh, uh, I know that they will greatly appreciate it. Or you may want to drop them a $100 bill and just buy the whole thing for them, it, it, whatever you want to do there. But uh, we appreciate everything that you do. We're going to come after our Sunday morning tithes and the offerings that go for the support of the church. We appreciate your giving every week, every Wednesday, every, sun, every service we have. Uh, that's how we maintain here. And... Uh, we got a lot of updates that we've been doing and uh, uh, putting lighting up around the church and just uh, things over here. Of course, uh, towards the summer, we've got to replace this whole air conditioning system uh, on this side of the church uh, as it starts warming up. And that's going to be several, 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 several thousands of dollars. So, uh, you know, we always have something uh, to do. We've got some maintenance work right now that we need to get done. Uh, but uh, we appreciate your giving. That's how we operate. Amen. Uh, a church is just like your house. It takes money to keep the lights on, the electric on, the up, the grounds kept up, the upkeep, and uh, keep it flowing. That's the way a church is. It takes money to do that. And we never beg for money. But uh, uh, if you'll do your part, what the Bible asks you, the church will never go in want as long as you do your part. Amen. So you give this morning. And I know that the Lord will bless you this morning. Can we stand? Hallelujah. Amen. Brother Dave, would you ask the Lord to bless our tithes and offerings this morning? Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for allowing us to come and worship you in this manner, Lord. We thank you for everything you've done. Lord, without you, we are not nobody. Now, we ask that you bless this offering, bless the giver, Lord. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may bring your offerings forward or go to the ATM machine if you're listening and call in at this time. Sister Lisa's ready to receive.
many remember when God set you free? He was bound by sin, and he came, broke that yoke of sin that was around our necks, and set us free. The Bible says, he who is free is free indeed, meaning that there's no more to me, let us come into the house of the Lord this morning, and looking forward what the Lord is going to do today, and we're just so thankful that you have come and uh, decided to worship with us this morning. It's a privilege to have you worshiping with us this morning. Thank you so much, and uh, we just want to get on into the Word today, and uh, uh, let's see what the Lord has in store. Uh, for each one of us this morning. If you brought your Bibles, turn with us to the book of Matthew, chapter number 24, and the book of James. Book of Matthew, chapter number 24, and the book of James. Hallelujah. Uh, don't forget tonight, you start at 6 o'clock tonight. We're going to be starting a whole brand new series uh, this evening. And uh, we'll be preaching that series for about a month. So come out, worship the Lord with us, and see what God's got in store on our Sunday night service. And then Wednesday night, uh, we just started. Last week was great. On um, Wednesday night, we just laid the foundation. We're going through the book of Esther and uh, building up character, building Christian character in our lives. And it's going to deal with a lot of different aspects of your life. So uh, come out for that. We have something on Wednesday nights for everyone. Amen. And I know that God's got something uh, for you if you come out and worship the Lord with us. And uh, uh, just really getting started last week where you just kind of give an introduction and uh, laying the groundwork for it. And uh, I was getting exciting, excited about just doing the introduction and different things where it's going to lead us over the next uh, couple months. Esther's just a book, 10 uh, chapters in the book of Esther, I believe it is, and uh, I, I promise you it'll probably take more than 10 Wednesday nights for us to get through it, but uh, come out and see what God's got in store for us. Hallelujah. Well, how many has found it in your Word of God? Matthew chapter number 24 is where we're going to start, and then uh, go over there to James at the en end of the New Testament almost, chapter number 5. We're going to start at the beginning and almost at the end today, so uh, we're going to preach the whole council this morning of the Word of God. The Bible tells us here in James chapter number 24, verse number 12 is where we're going to start at today. Hallelujah. Or Matthew, excuse me. Thank you, wife. Amen. The Bible says this, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. So now this is the verse that I want you to... Uh, catch this morning. There's a word in here this morning. But he that shall endure. Everybody say endure this morning. Endure to the end shall be saved. Let's read that again. But he that shall endure till the end shall be saved. All right, so let's turn now to James. James chapter number five this morning. James chapter number five. We'll start with verse number 11, I think is where I've got it marked this morning. The Bible says this, Behold, we count them happy, which what? Endure. endure. Amen. Behold, we count them happy, which endure. Have you heard the patience of Job and seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is pitiful, and of full 
enough tender mercy, excuse me. Father, Lord, we love you this morning, Lord. We're so thankful for all your blessings today. Lord, we ask that you would anoint, minister, touch, have your way in Jesus' name. And everybody says, amen. Turn your neighbor and say, good morning, neighbor. Some says, why do you have us say good morning every Sunday morning to our neighbor? Because sometimes that's the only time somebody tells you good morning. And I want you to know it is a good morning, a blessed morning this morning. This year I've been preaching on things to get us started and preaching on things to help us on Sunday mornings uh, through the entirety of the year. Messages that you can go back on and, and reflect in, uh, um, and and. and draw from this morning and so uh, if you maybe missed a Sunday you can go on our uh, YouTube page or you can go on our uh, uh, um, online streaming there on Facebook page and you'll see the different messages that we put up every week so uh, we've been preaching on this series of our new year and uh, the, the the first thing that we preached on the tools the things that we're going to need to make it through this new year. And then the second thing that we preached on last Sunday was start to finish for 2023. Amen. Getting your will in check with God's will. Getting your will in check with God's will. And I'm going to challenge you, if you weren't here last Sunday morning, you probably really need to go back and listen to that. If you're listening by way of live stream, go back and listen to that message last Sunday morning. And uh, I believe it's going to challenge you. But this morning, uh, we got a brand new uh, direction that we're going on this morning. We're on a journey, 2023 journey. Amen. How many of you like to go on a journey? Like to go somewhere? Sometimes it may just be the Burger King, but you're going somewhere. Hallelujah. Sometimes it may just be down to the gas station, but you're going somewhere. Sometimes it's like somebody said, H-E-B, that you're, but you're going somewhere. You know, I, sometimes I go into the, the super H-E-B over there on Saratoga, and uh, I get a little lost with my time in there. Because I'll go through over there where all the health products are, and I'll look at them a little while and uh, pick out what I need. And then, then from, you know, they kind of got it set up for a man. You go from the health products to buying your deodorant, your toothpaste, and then you go to the next one, and it's your grills and uh, uh, things like that, you know, uh, and fish and stuff. And, uh, and I get in, in kind of in there and look at those grills and uh, uh, those smokers and think, man, what could I do with that? And I'll journey through there, and uh, then from there it goes over to the uh, paper goods that you need. And, and out from there I just adventure out through that whole store and, and Sheila always wants to go over there to where the, the flowers and the uh, clothing department is and things like that. And I drag her away from there and we go on doing our grocery shopping then. But we're on a journey, hallelujah. But as we look here this morning, a lot of times in our lives, we get a little hung up on our journeys. We start out good, but we have a hard time finishing we start out thinking, well, this is where it's going to lead us. Our good intentions that we have throughout the year this morning. But here the Bible is going to be some words that we're going to study from this morning, we're going to preach from. And one of the th keys this morning of endurance, the key to this journey is going to be endurance. He who can make it till the end this morning. Finish that race. What did he say? He shall endure until the end today. And so we want to preach on those key things uh, that we feel like it's going to take for us to endure. Many years ago in 1917, there was a dog sled race. And uh, a dog sled race, I know here in South Texas, 
that is kind of hard for us to understand, a dog sled race. But that dog sled race went from uh, Canada all the, day, all the way down to uh, St. Pete, Minnesota, from Winnipeg, Canada, down to St. Pete, Minnesota. It was a 500-mile grueling race uh, where temperatures would drop down to the two digit below zeros, uh, sometimes 20 below zero at night. Uh, and they started this dog sled race uh, with a prize uh, of $10 thousand dollars. I know today in comparison to today and to then uh, that prize would have to be probably a a, a million dollars to get people to participate in it. Uh, But uh, in those days in 1917, ten thousand dollars for some that was a uh, Uh, many years wages for them. Uh, For others that would be a life changing event uh, for them today. Uh, In today's standard yes that is still a lot of money and uh, you can do a lot with it but it's not as prevalent as it was back then. Uh, But men would come from all over the United States and Canada and uh, uh, even other parts of the world uh, to run this race, uh, this 500 mile race, uh, there was a young boy uh, that was in that race. His name was Will. Uh, Will was a young boy that uh, really was too young to be running in this race. He was 17 years old. Uh, and uh, they looked at him and they said, No, uh, you cannot run this race. Uh, you cannot do it. Uh, but another man paid his entry fee uh, and they had to allow this young man to run the race. The only reason the young man wanted to run the race, uh, he was trying to save his family farm. Uh, His dad had passed away. Uh, The bank was coming due with the loan uh, and they didn't have the money uh, to pay the loan. Uh, But he wanted to win the race to save the farm. Uh, Friend, for uh, many, many days, uh, he ran that race in hardship uh, in times of uh, tragedy. Uh, he lost some of his, co- uh, he seen some of his co-workers uh, lose the race along the way uh, because they lost their life. Uh, but him and his dogs, uh, his leader's dog was by the name of Gus uh, and they led the pack. Uh, sometimes he'd fall behind uh, and he'd try all night long to get ahead in the race. Uh, others would camp out and rest, uh, but he'd go through the night. Why? Uh, because he knew he must finish. Uh, this young 17-year-old man, uh, man by the name of Will, uh, after days and days of freezing weather, uh, of grind upon him, uh, just eating a little mixture uh, every day and taking care of his dogs, uh, at the end of the time, uh, he won the race. But why did he run the race? Uh, because when others rest, he kept on going. Uh, when others fell on the waist, side, he kept on going. When others got injured, he kept on going. It was endurance, amen. And this morning, church, the only way you're going to finish this race, the only way you're going to endure to the end is not stop. Don't look to your right or the left. But keep your eyes on the prize that is laid out before us this morning. You must endure until the end. Endurance this morning. Finish the race. Later on, they brought a story about young Will. Young Will Stoneman. Many of you have probably seen that little story on TV or rented the movies years ago when it came out. Kevin Spacey was on it and others. And it was called Iron Will. Anybody ever see Iron Will before? If you've never seen it, you need to sometime take time to watch it. It will inspire you to finish the race, to start ahead. I don't promote movies too often, but every now and then something good, all right? But as we look here this morning, 
we begin to see struggles in our lives. And we got to realize that we got to finish. And by the way, that is a true story. We've got to finish what we start. We can't set aside and say, well, I'll get back to it. We'll never finish. If one is to live the Christian life, he must take on the traits and the character traits of endurance. Because I will tell you there's times that when I've been on this journey that I felt all alone. There's times that I've been on this journey that I have felt spiritually weak, spiritually hungry, spiritually famished. There was times that on this journey I would, as a Christian, that I wonder if my prayers were reaching the heavens. But even during those times, I understood that I must be faithful. And not just during those times, but there's going to be days ahead of frustrations. There's going to be days ahead when life happens. And we say, Lord, where art thou this morning? Have you departed from me? But we must Continually pressing on this morning. There's a difference between the world's interpretation of endurance and the Word of God's interpretation of endurance. The world says what cannot be cured must be endured. But this is this morning. A scripture that lets us realize endurance is something that can be accomplished. The world's type of endurance many times promote no joy or provides no joy this morning at all. It is focused upon the necessary of submission. And should I say the necessary parts of that. But the Bible tells us that there's a happier side of endurance. The joy of the Lord is our strength this morning. The prize of heaven is our destination on this journey this morning. A life that is fulfilled is full of the power of God. Imprisonment, Paul and Silas, at that Philippian jail, there we find were good Christians of endurance. They didn't sit there on those well. On the side of that jail cell, walls leaned up and chained to it and sing the sorrows of life and cry out and lament to the Lord as we see Job and others and Jeremiah as we preached last week as we see them crying out to the Lord and lamenting. But we find that Paul and Silas, they realized that there is more to life than the circumstances uh, that they were in at that moment. Uh, that those circumstances, uh, they're always changing uh, this morning. How did they endure? Uh, they begin to sing the songs of Zion. Uh, begin to worship the Lord. Uh, begin to lift that name that's above every name. Uh, that name that every knee shall bow. Uh, and their God begin to minister. Uh, and they were set free. Uh, 
and the jailer was saved. And this morning, church, oh, don't lament and be sorrowful over hardship, but look unto the author and the finisher of faith and your endurance. You will hear, well done this morning. It will last. When Dickinson's wrote his Christmas book, Charles Dickens, he shut him up for six weeks. Amen. Till he came to that place that he knew he could do it. He endured. Another man, talking about endurance, was a, a great horse breeder in Kentucky. I know we're soon will be in the spring, even though today seems like spring, doesn't it? We'll soon be in the spring, and that one freeze that we have will be a past mem memory. But in Kentucky, when you get into the spring, you begin to think about the Kentucky Derby and all the other races that goes on. And this breeder had breeded a champion when the horse had to be laid down because of age. His body was failing him. They dug a great hole. There they laid that horse down, they covered him up, and they put a monument out there over that horse. And on the inscriptions of that monument, it wrote this, here lies the fleetest runner the American turf has ever known. The fleetest runner of the American turf has ever known. The Christian race this morning is not one who is the swiftest. But the Christian race of endurance this morning is one of patience. It is one who finishes this morning. Some will get there before us. How many have loved ones already in heaven this morning? Hallelujah. They've already finished the race. Some left this world what we would consider a little too early. But on God's time, it was right on time. Others seemingly stuck around for a long time. How many read this week that the oldest living person in Texas died this week? 114 years old, I believe it was. They said the oldest living person, but when they wrote that, she wasn't the oldest living person anymore. But they called her the oldest living person. She'd already passed. That's a long time to live. All those years, thinking about those years. But it's he who endures to the end that will see that great witness that can pass his heaven. That's the patience. This morning, in 2023, there's going to be days that you're going to need patience to endure. There's going to be days that your carnal flesh is going to say, Throw in the towel. Give up. It's not worth the battle. But free him this morning. The endur endurance is one character trait that all must come and add along with their faith this morning. It's one of the key components that causes us to finish this morning. And I've got three points today that I want to preach on, Lord willing, if we get to them all this morning. 
The first thing is, the first key this morning is when faith endures. When our faith endures. Now, the Bible tells us that Paul was writing to the church of Ephesus. And he said, take upon you the whole armor of God. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Above all, taking the shield of faith. That ye may be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked. The shield of faith this morning is not an offensive weapon. It is a defensive weapon. America this morning, we have offensive weapons, bombs that we can send over, seize, and be there in a few minutes at a target. We use that on our aggression. But we also had, and we've seen them during the Gulf War and the war that we just come out of and other times, and they have sent many of these equipment to Ukraine to use in their defensive weapons. And as the enemy sends their bombs this way, we can send a missile that will knock it down and shield us from the enemy's attack. This morning the devil is a lion seeking whom he may devour. And he's also a warrior. He's also a man of war and he understands war. And he will use many devices, the Bible says, to attack us, to attack our lives. One thing he uses is our mind. Another thing it uses is our heart if it's not stayed true with God. He uses things and people around us this morning. But God wants us to understand without the shield of faith, one would be almost impossible to endure this battle. Sure, our battle is not against flesh and blood, but it's against the powers and the principalities uh, of this air this morning. It's a spiritual battle this morning. But sometimes in the spiritual battle, it affects the physical man also. And so we must realize that we cannot fight, but we have a shield of faith. A shield is not a weapon. A shield is a protective item of armament that guards the soldiers that when the blows are aimed at them, they can use it as a buffer to buff it away, to spend it away. We have no control what comes our way underneath the attack of Satan. But this morning, we can respond by the shield of faith. Hallelujah. You say, how can I do that? By saying, listen here, Satan. The word of God says I have authority to say, get thee behind me, Satan. And he has to get thee behind me. Hallelujah. We have authority to say, greater is he that liveth within me than he that liveth within the world this morning. We have authority to say, Satan, you are a liar. And all the imps of hell that come up against us, we can throw aside this morning. Why? Because God has given us a shield of faith to send the fiery darts away this morning. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Too many times we allow the enemy to penetrate us because we leave the shield of faith. We take it off. We get relaxed in the battle, should we say. And that is when we are most exposed to the enemy. When we get relaxed in the battle. The shield this morning 
enables us to take a licking. Hallelujah. And just like Energizer, it helps us to keep on ticking. Hallelujah. We take that licking and keep on ticking. This is a victory that the overcomer of the world, we find that John wrote, it's he that overcometh the world, even our faith is real. He said, he that endureth to the end shall be saved. So that first key to endurance is faith. Amen. Your faith is going to be challenged. Your faith this morning is going to come under attack. You say, oh, it, mine isn't. Yes, it is every day. If it isn't, then you really don't have faith. Because the devil is seeking to devour, seeking to kill anybody who has claimed Jesus as their Savior. Anybody who's been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ, the devil is out to destroy. And he's out to deceive you, and he does that by chipping away at your faith. So that armament, that shield of faith, needs to be in constant watch over. When it gets damaged, repair it. Fix it. Before you don't have any left this morning. The second thing that I want to talk to you about this morning is love. When love endures this morning. When love endures. On January in eighteen seventy nine, a British ship that was in an awful predicament off of the coast of Vancouver near Cape Bell, for four days the captain and the crew. The fog was so intense for four days, they could not see anything that was ahead of them. They couldn't see the moon and the stars at night. They couldn't see the sun in the day because the heavy fog had come in from the elements. Day after day, they went on. And they soon realized they were in treacherous waters. One of the watchmen that were looking out over the pier cried out, Break her ahead! Break her ahead! The captain immediately lowered the anchors because he realized how dangerous it was. Not only was there fog, but the waves were rising high, tipping the ship from one direction to another. They had lowered the masses. They had did everything they knew to do. And there the anchor caught hold. They were scared, though, because they were so close to the water edge of the beaches and the breakers. They were in less than 100 yards they were so scared that the boat would still drift in to a breaker. So they threw down one of the lifeboats. Immediately when they threw down one of the lifeboats to get ready to climb in, it dissipated into the waters because it was so rough. They lost that. They threw another one the same way. They lost it. Finally, after the third one, they were able to lower it down. And the men got into, the captain and the men got into the little lifeboat and made it to shore. 
That night they slept underneath the boat. As the fog and the weather and the rains were coming down. They stayed underneath that boat for almost two or three days. Out there along that beach. At breakers. And finally the fog dissipated. Until then, they never really knew how close they were to shore. When the fog dissipated, their boat, their ship came into speck. And they seen it out there. And they looked at it. It was all safe. Nothing was wrong with it. And they took their little oar boat and they oared themselves back to the ship. And they headed on in their journey. This morning, but this morning they didn't give up. They endured. As we look at love this morning, the Bible says that love endureth all things. For time's sake, we're not going to read the 13th chapter of the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. But the Bible says in one verse there, it says, Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Beareth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. He's talking about love. Love enables us to accept and to forgive. Without hesitation or limitations, folks. Many times in our love, we say, well, I forgive you, but I don't forget. Sometimes we will say, I forgive you, and we tell them we do forget, but we never actually do. Amen. That's where that memory can get entanglement sometimes. I don't know about you, but it's easier for me to remember those who stab me in the back than those who bless me. It's easier for me to remember those who tried to knock me across the back of the head than those who rised up and kissed me on the cheek this morning. So many times in life we just remember the negative things that goes on. Last year some of you had some crossings. You had some hurts from people that you thought you loved, that loved you, and you still love them, hopefully, as a Christian this morning. How many would say amen? Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, I love you in spite. Hallelujah. Amen. Whew, amen. For Natalie to say that to his sister, that's a big thing. Hallelujah. But we love in spite. But the Bible wants us to understand that love will cover a multitude of sin. So many times we get hung up on the sin. And we forget that Jesus went to the pits to drug us out. He loved us this morning with a greater love than no man. But the Bible says that love beareth all things this morning. Our Lord empowers us as Christians to endure by those love of kindness and acts of the heart this morning. Where that agape love is present. The power to endure is present when love is there. Love is also one of the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy. So we've got to radiate to that. There's times I've gotten upset with my child. And at that time, I may not have liked him, but I still loved him. May not really cared to be around him for a few minutes. 
but I still love thee. Amen. There's times, I'm sure Sheila would say that about me. Amen. You notice how I phrased that so I didn't get in trouble. And I think she still loves me. She's still hanging with me, I guess. Amen. There's times that God gets angry with us because of our sin or our backsliding, our waverness, our lack of obedience, our strong will. But He still loves us. And that love endures. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad that His love and His mercy is renewed on our behalf every morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That it's just not a one-time thing. So many times people say, well, I tried to love them and it didn't work. They tried one time. Hallelujah. It didn't work. But you just keep on. Closing with this one this morning. Do you have a vision? Third thing this morning for this year. Endurance causes us to see what's ahead. Now, on your journey this morning, you get in your car after church, you're going to journey somewhere, or whoever you're riding with or however you got here. When you get in that car, you already have a vision of where you're going. Unless you're in our car, and the first question I ask is where we're going to eat lunch. And I don't know. But you all have a vision, do you not? Some of you, you get in that car today, you're already thinking about them tamales and those things that, uh, uh, those fajitas and those tacos that you're going to eat whenever you go in there. You're already visualizing them, should I say. Some of you, you get in your car, you're thinking about that fried chicken that's sitting there waiting for you wherever you're going to go. Others of you this morning, whatever it is that you're having for lunch today or, or your afternoon meal, whatever you have, you're envisioning that. Amen. You're seeing it. And so you take a journey to where that is this morning. If you're going home to eat, you wives are sitting by that husband and thinking, you sorry thing, you're in vision. Why aren't you taking me out to eat today? It's Sunday. Amen. It's a day of rest. Come on now. Some of you wives know you're speaking the truth. I'm speaking the truth there. And you mean if you are taking her out to eat, some of you are looking over there and saying, why didn't you get them cooked today? We wouldn't have to make this trip. Amen. But you envision that. This morning on our spiritual journey, Throughout this year, Moses, the Bible said, endured as he seen him who is invisible. As he seen him who is invisible. What you are and what you become in life depends on what you see. You say, what do you mean? What you see depends on your vision. Whether it's a vision of high or whether it's a vision of low this morning. I talk to many young people, and, and, and if you're around me much, I like to know what's going on in their lives, where their life is at. And I will talk to them, and one of the things, after a little while, after I get to know them, I'll say, why do you want to be in life? The number one answer is, I don't know. I don't know. Every now and then you get that self-motivator and they say, I want to be a doctor. I want to be a lawyer. I want to be a policeman. I want to be a fireman. I want to be a nurse. I want to be this. And they've already got it planned out. How they, they're visualizing that life this morning. A lot of them who says, I don't know. You watch their lives. They go from one low-end job to another because they never visualized what they wanted in their life. They just took it as it comes. 
should I say this morning. They never pursued dreams. They just took it and said, well, if it's to be, this is what will happen this morning. Friend, this morning, if you're to endure, you must be able to see above the circumstances. Heartaches, yes. Trials, yes. Suffering along the way, yes, amen. But Job said, said, though I cannot see or feel God, I know that my Redeemer liveth, hallelujah. Three in this morning, the, the, we see sometimes the invisible circumstances uh, you say are against us. Uh, but Elijah, or Elisha, excuse me, uh, he prayed and he said, Lord, open the eyes of my servant uh, that he may see the angels that are encamped about us. Uh, here was the Syrians. Uh, we're ready to overtake them and destroy them. Him. And the servant said, what shall I do? What shall we do? I don't see any way out of this. That's when the Lord said, open his eyes that he may see. Three in this morning. Oh, quit going through life with blinders on. Amen. Now you can't see two feet in front of you. But say, to the Lord, open my eyes that I may see what is laid out before me. That I may know the path that you have for me this morning, God. Give me that vision to endure it to the end. Hallelujah. Give me that vision this morning. Sisters Rivera back there this morning. Late last year, she got her final test, and now she's a doctor of pharmacy. Give her a big hand. I know we've already did that. But that vision started in high school or before probably. Or in the first years of college. She had never made it this far. Amen. If it wasn't for that vision. Brandy started late. 42 years old. She finished just a couple weeks ago. Give her a big hand. Hallelujah. I asked Brandy Wednesday night, I said, what are you doing now that you're not studying every night? She said, I'm learning to play the piano. Hallelujah. Well, if we take how long it took her to get her B.A. <laughs> Brandy, your grandchildren may get to see you play the piano. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. But she's visualizing it. Amen. We may never get to hear her, folks. But we're visualizing it. How many follow me this morning? Amen. Brother Natalie's finishing up his degree. Amen. He's wanting to get his master's. But he's visualizing getting that piece of paper. He goes to that computer every day or every other day. How many days he, he has to study? To visualize that this morning. Some of you that are still working, getting up and going and dragging the bear home every night. You're visualizing the last day you get to shake that boss's hand and say, I'm out of here. Hallelujah. I'm not coming to work no more, no more, no more. Amen. I mean, when I was in high school, my, the day that I graduated or the day that I finished my last course, I got in my truck and back then I wasn't saved, all right? I wasn't saved, so you got to understand this. And I cranked on the radio, Brother Brian, as loud as I could. And, I mean, I went spinning out. I had a truck that was fast, and uh, it would run like a scalded dog. And I spun my wheels, and the radio, it's that song that come on in the 80s. Some of you that are my age, you remember it. I ain't going to school no more, no more. And I blowed the horn and said, I ain't going to school no, no more, no more. And do you know, 37 years later, I study every day of my life. I literally did that. That was the exact song that come on. But this morning, what is your vision spiritually this morning? For this year. I'm not saying set goals. Because when you don't achieve those goals, you get discouraged. 
you give up. But if you visualize it and you pursue it and you keep it a visual before you, you never know what God's going to do in your life. Amen. Pastor, I want to be more faithful to you. Get on the journey of faithfulness. Pastor, I want to pray more. Get on the journey of becoming an intercessor prayer. And stay on it. Visualize it right. Pastor, I want to help others. Well, you better get on the journey of prayer before you get into the journey of helps. Because it's going to take a lot. Pastor, I want to do more than I've ever did in my life. Get on the journey of doing more for God than you've ever did in your life this morning. Pastor, I, I have some things in my life I want to handle. The only way you're going to handle it is to get on the journey of endurance. You cannot just say, well, I will get around to it. It will not happen. You've got to endure until the end this morning. The key word this morning for endurance. Now write this down if you are. I should have made it a point this morning as I'm closing with this. The key word for endurance this morning is look on to Jesus. Look on to Jesus. Say that with me this morning. Look on to Jesus. Now this part. I will look unto Jesus. Say that with me. I will look unto Jesus. Uh, for whom my help cometh from this morning. Uh, for him this morning. Uh, don't try to endure to the end on your own. Uh, Jesus is there. And he will help you finish the race this morning. He will help you. Sheila comes this morning. I know your endurance is about up with me this morning, so come, Sheila. Hallelujah. I had some things I was going to say this morning. The Bible says, open your eyes there, but I, four different points, but I'm not going to get into them this morning. But Jesus, the Master, Savior endured like no other. You see, any moment when that first little sprinkle of spit fell upon his face, the day of his compassion, he could have called the Father, and ten thousand of thousands of thousands of angels would have came and delivered him. The first time the whip went across his back he could have said father come and get me I don't have to go through this I'm not going to do this but he endured it for 39 times the first time they took the reed and they began to poke that crown of thorns on his head he could have called the father and said father the pain is too great I can't endure this but he allowed them to beat that on his head. The first time he was walking up that hill called Golgotha with the cross on his back that was hamburger meat basically, bleeding and opal goring, he could have called the father and said, I can't make another step. But he endured all the way. But the endurance doesn't, wasn't one the steps to that hill called Golgotha. The endurance was won the night before in the Garden of Geth Gethsemane where he prayed. He said, Father, not my will, but thy will. You see, your endurance will come and you'll complete it, but you've got to prepare your heart and your life and your soul that God can carry you through. And this year, there's going to be those days where you just rather, when that alarm goes off, just rather cover your head up with those blankets. Move on, then move on. That's when you got to get up and say, I'm going to take a step. I'm going to try it. I'm going to endure it to the end. In your job, there's going to be days that you're going to be so frustrated. You'll walk out of that plant 
that job, that store, that office, whatever it is. Say, I ain't coming back tomorrow. Not coming back anymore. But you got to endure it. You win that endurance on your knees in prayer for God. Church, there's going to be times you're going to say, man, the preacher sure ain't hitting it anymore. He's not got what he used to have. Music's not what it used to be. I don't know. I don't know if I want to go. That's when you got to endure and stay the course. Because God's got a plan. You're on that journey. Can we stand this morning? Marriage is going to face some rock, rocky hard times this year. But you just don't throw it out with the first little thing. You made a commitment in that marriage. You said, I will to death do us part. In health or in sickness, in wealth or poorness. Somebody say, well, we never got out of the poorness. That's all right. as we're just laying some spiritual groundwork for this year. You have challenged me, Lord, in every one of these messages. Even though I was the deliverer of the mail, you still have challenged me with the words. God, I pray this morning that we'll get that fortitude, that backbone that we need spiritually to endure to the end this morning. When the road gets rough and the way gets weary, we look to you for our strength. Because you've given us a vision. You've given us a hope on this journey this morning. Father, we want to complete it. We want to finish it. Lord, we give you the praise this morning. Can we just lift those hands all over this building? Let's just worship. I need your mercy. mercy.
I want us to come and spend some time around these altars this morning. You'll meet me down here. Hallelujah. We're going to pray together.